Welcome to DIY is my happy place. Would you believe that 90% of the supplies used to create these came from the Dollar Tree? Today's gnome tutorial is going to be all about sunshine and lemons, oranges, whatever it may be. So I'm going to make a cute little lemon baker. Now, next week's DIY that I'm going to be showing is how to make the food items and accessories actually from Dollar Tree items. I've got a great way to do it so fast, so easy. You're going to be astounded, so check back next Wednesday. But for today, we're going to be showing our cute lemon gnome. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to be able to make this gnome stand up in a fast easy, efficient way, and that is give her a base to stand on. Now I get the little popsicle sticks from the Dollar Tree, cut them into four equal pieces, and then glue on the back. Give it a nice secure two pieces of popsicle stick, and these are actually thinner than regular popsicle sticks, so they're easy to cut just with plain old scissors. And then hot glue. And I'm telling you, I've tried a lot of different ways to help make a gnome stand, and it just seems like they like to tip over. But if they have a stand like this, they're really pretty secure. So this is the way to go. Okay, now I always like to set things aside and let them dry. Getting the Easter eggs that are cut on the sides make fabulous shoes. Today I'm gonna to use just the bottoms, and the way I'm gonna get a hole is just melting it with the hot glue gun. Now you want it to be, the hole to be the size of the, the balloon straw, because the balloon straw is gonna be the legs. And so you just measure your balloon straw on your hot glue gun so you know and it's just a little bit thinner smaller around than the hot glue sticks themselves now here's the balloon straws i use these for everything i used balloon straws for the legs of my table and then spray painted them i really use these on so many things because they're really easy to use easy to cut but really sturdy now, let's get back to our stand. Once it's nice and dry, you can trim off those little edges and it's starting to come together. Okay, then I put my eggs on to make sure it's all gonna fit. Now, depending on what size gnome, sometimes I use the larger eggs, but this is gonna be a shorter, smaller gnome. And I do like to color in the stand to match whatever color I'm doing on my gnome. So maybe yellow, maybe black, maybe silver, maybe gold, just depending on what color. I just want it to not take away from the look of the gnome. And I'm really trying to go with a lot of yellow on this particular one. And I'm using some Dollar Tree markers. You can use paints if you want, spray paint, a lot of different ways. But I, I find it's really nice to use markers because then it dries immediately and I don't have to wait for paint to dry. So I definitely recommend using a marker and that's all there is to it for our stand okay now we've got our eggs and our straws now we want to glue those down i just put some glue up into the egg not completely around the edge and it, as soon as i tip it over onto the stand it just kind of drops down where i need it to be and it's not a bad idea to keep the straw in the egg so you so it's not dripping out i sometimes it just sometimes drips over the edge, but that's the beauty of hot glue. You can just wipe it off with your little popsicle stick and it'll be just fine. Now, the other thing that you can do is just put a little bit of hot glue up through the hole and I put it right down into the straw. You don't want it to go too far up because you are going to use the little attachment that attaches one straw to the next, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now the base of the gnome is men's athletic ankle socks. And I 
do cut the top off because it tends to be too long. I've been making so many gnomes. I'm on my third pillow now. And I've just been recycling old pillows and getting myself new pillows. And I use the insides. The one thing that you do want to do is to really fluff up the cotton. Because you don't want it to be matted. And in the case of standing gnomes, you want them to be as light as possible on top. If you're going to do the type of gnome that the body is on the base is all the way to the bottom, then you can use something that weights it down, like sand or rice. But in this case, it's going to be standing up, and so I just need it as light as a feather. So I'm going to be stuffing it with cotton. And you do want it to be pretty stuffed. If, it, if it's not pretty firm, then she'll tend to bend over and kind of tip over. So you do want to kind of stuff it in there more than you might think. Okay, then you're going to have it looking somewhat like a little potato. And then you can put two straw legs coming out the bottom. I like to put the little attachments in and, and give it a try. Make sure that it's going to stand up correctly so it's not the legs aren't bowing out anything weird. And that looks right. So I can pop it back off because I'm going to glue the straws up into the batting. So now that I know that's the right position, and this can be a little bit flexible because once it's glued into the batting, it still can move around a little bit. So don't panic if it's not exactly perfect. But then be generous with your glue. Just glue down, down under the straws, down, and it just goes right on into the batting so that it can hold it into place. There we go. Now we're gonna let those two things completely dry. And because we use so much hot glue in there, they need to have a minute. Now, you can do different things for the gnome nose. I have used ping pong balls. I like these styrofoam balls that you get from the Dollar Tree if you can get a hold of them. Sometimes they don't stock them. But the reason I like them better than ping pong balls is ping pong balls sometimes can, um, if hot glue touches it, they will dent. And they're just not quite as strong. So I definitely do like the foam balls if you can get a hold of them. Then you just wrap some pantyhose around, and I have used the same pair of pantyhose for dozens of gnomes. I use every square inch of it. Now I just get me a mop again from the Dollar Tree, and I used to count off each one so I had it exactly right. Uh, yeah, I don't do that anymore. I just cut off a bunch, put it, like just grab it, put cut it in half, and do a good estimate of it. Now, pipe cleaners are your best friends. The reason why you use pipe cleaners instead of elastic is a lot, we're gonna be uh, gluing these on and we don't want it to melt. So elastic, and also elastic just gets brittle and dry and pops off eventually. So definitely pipe cleaners are the answer for this. Okay, and then we're gonna braid it. It doesn't have to be braided, but I love my little gnome girls having braids. I think it looks so cute. So we just braid that down and then pipe clean the bottom. And I like to get the colored pipe cleaners and then use whatever color is my main theme. And then it looks like it's a little ribbon on the bottom. You can use ribbon too, but then you've got to find all the different colors of ribbon. Now, if you have that, use it. But the pipe cleaners work great. I just buy them in the multicolor bags and they can be all ready for anything. Okay, now we'll just get this second one done. And I do tend to trim my pipe cleaners to the right size ahead of time, so I'm not trying to hold on to my braid and trim the pipe cleaner down. <laughs> just a little tip, because I've done these a lot. <laughs> then you can just trim the bottoms of your mop, and those are ready to go. Okay, now let's look at what we're gonna do for the hat and the skirt. Now, generally I will use a sock for the hat or a glove, but I really wanted this one to be white and I didn't, I couldn't find the right look or color, so I'm gonna make my own. I took a Dollar Tree basket and this white fabric is the soft buffing cloth that you get in automotive 
I think it's like rags used for cleaning your car, but I love it. It's really soft. I use it on a lot of gnomes, either for skirts, for arms, and this time I'm going to use it for its hat. So we want to cut a very large, big circle. I like to test and see if I need more glue over there because I want everything to be drying and so I'm not waiting on it. Okay, now I've got my circular fabric and I want to do a trim around the bottom so I'm, I, I never waste any of this. I love it so much and I can use it for so many different things. So get some more of my scrap fabric of this buffing cloth and then trim a, as long of a piece as I can get out of it. And it's about an inch and a half wide. So then we're going to glue it around the circle. Now, of course, this is no sew. I just, I'm not much of a seamstress, so I like to glue everything. That's, that's my idea of a good craft. It's something I can glue. So we're just going to hot glue around where some people might sew, <laughs> unless you're me. Then you're just going to hot glue all the way in a circle. Now, if the line of fabric is longer than the circle, we can just trim it off at the end. So we're not going to worry about it. You just have to make sure it's long enough. And if it isn't, you can glue two pieces together too and have an extra seam if you need to. Okay, so that's all there is to this. You just And I do like to use, I have used those little finger things that help you from getting hot glue on your fingers and burning yourself, but they can sometimes be a little awkward. So I actually prefer just using a popsicle stick to push it into place so I don't burn my fingers. So just a little tip and trick, and then keep on going around until you've got your full circle for your hat. And I wanted this hat to look like a baker's hat. So that's the other reason. I just really wanted a white hat and I just haven't been able to find the right kind of glove. So I'm going to, I made it myself. Okay. Now checking on the body and make sure it's got the glue drying. Now we're going to get out a couple of these curlers and I love using these for the arms because then they're automatically bendable. And I have a, a dish towel that's lemon that I got years ago from the Dollar Tree. I haven't seen them this year, but they may still come in. But I like to do this in a way that I can do two at a time and just save on time and energy. But what I do is I roll the dishcloth around the two curlers, and then I'm going to glue it. But you've got to get some of the cloth rolled around the curler before you put your glue down because if the curler touches the hot glue it kind of melts those curlers because they're very fragile foam and then so you do one line with the cur with the hot glue cut it off and then here's a little DIY trick that I've figured out if you take a piece of plastic paper and I just use some scrap paper that I have from my border stickers and then put glue on it and roll it over. Let it let glue be on the fabric so it's thick and kind of will ooze when you finish rolling it. Now, when I roll it, it'll ooze off onto that plastic, anything that's extra. And I don't burn my hand, and yet I get a perfect seam. And I don't have little frayed edges. So, love that little tip. So that's the way to get your arms all the way glued. Okay, now we're gonna work on the skirt. I want the skirt to be some of this lemon dish towel. So I'm just gonna trim it down to the size that I am hoping for, for the skirt. I don't know about you, but lemons this time of year just look so summery and I guess it's spring, but it just brings out joy and hello, sunshine. That's my quote. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to put plastic under it, and then I'm going to fold it over for a top seam so I don't have a rough edge. And actually, I cut it a little bit long, so I just decided, you know what? I'll give it a little bit of a 
top edge there. Okay. Now, you'll notice that it's a lot bigger than the gnome itself. And I did that on purpose because I want to be able to gather this skirt so it's not just a pencil skirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down the back and glue all the way along. And you'll see that there's excess on both sides and we want it that way and I'm going to show you what to do in just a minute. So we're going to glue down the edge here and that is the back of our gnome. Okay now we're going to go around to the front of the gnome and we're going to glue that down. Well, let me check on this real quick first. Let's see. I want to make sure that our shoes are really getting solidly glued to our platform and the straws are in there nice and solid and We'll go ahead and trim off my arms and see how they're doing. Okay, now you, it's a good idea to use your pipe cleaner and twist off the arms so that when we put the mittens on there, they have a place to attach. And there's different ways that you can do the hands. You can do mittens, you can do... Um, the balls, I actually like using the decorative balls because it's just so fast and easy. Now when I'm doing a gnome with a glove, then I might use the tips of the fingers of the glove for the mittens. But in this case, I'm just gonna use decorative balls. That'll work perfectly. And I like getting those multicolor ones because then I have something for each color depending on what type of gnome I'm doing. So I just need to get two of the balls that have the same size and the right color. And then I'll just glue them right onto the ends of my arms. And those are now going to be the hands. They kind of look like Lego hands. You know how Legos always have round hands? <laughs> okay, now let's get back to our skirt. The back's dried nicely. So we're gonna glue right halfway on the front. And now what you want to do is you want to just keep on thinking of half and half and half. So you're just going to glue the fabric down halfway. Hope that makes sense. And then turn it over to the other side and go halfway. And you just keep on making up the difference until you have a complete gather all the way around. You'll see that it's it looks like it has elastic now. If you just keep on just adding a little glue and wherever it's poking out, we can actually take the elastic that we had left over from our stock, our sock and help gather that up. And I do like to glue those down just to make sure that they continue to hold in place right where we want it. Now, a lot of times I've done the gnomes and I go the opposite direction. I start from the top and work my way down. But I found sometimes it's just easier if you start from the bottom and work your way up. Okay, now we're going to put a belt. And I love the stickers with the gems that the Dollar Tree has. But I will say they do tend to start popping off. So you do need to put some hot glue on the very end to hold it into place. Now we're gonna let that dry a minute and I can start working on my arms again. I, now that I have those curlers in there, they can just be bendable any way I'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of those cute little gems around the uh, ends of the sleeves to help glam this little pretty girl up. I love some sparkle on every gnome I make. So again, these little stickers, I sometimes, they don't have them, sometimes they do. I always grab a few different colors whenever I'm in the Dollar Tree when I see them. I haven't seen them for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, but they'll come around again. Okay, she's starting to look good. Just put a little glue around all of the little gems just to help hold them into place. Even though they're self-adhesive, they do want to pop off of terry cloth once in a while so it's a good idea to give it a little glue okay now let's make sure her legs are in place where I want them now we're going to start working towards the top we're going to put the nose on our cute little gnome 
And you do want to be generous with the glue. And I glue it on up there where the top of the pantyhose and the pipe cleaner are. And the same with the arm. We're going to really give it some glue. And I like it when the arm is almost up on the top of the head. And that's why we like to have the arms extra long so that there's plenty of space to glue them on the top of the head because you don't want the arms being glued on where the bottom of the hat is or sometimes you see the the seams or the glue so definitely glue them up on the top of the head and then we can glue on our cute little braids and again everything's going to be up towards the top where we're going to put some stuffing anyway so it just will help to give it a little bit of a lift up here. Okay, we're gluing on our braids. Again, we have pipe cleaners to help keep them from fraying or falling apart. And got my handy stick. She's starting to come together. Okay, here's my cute little hat. Now let's turn it right side out. Make sure that there's no spots that I miss glue. Oops, yep, looks like I missed a little spot right here. Easy enough to fix. Just push that in place, and now we're gonna give just a little bit of stuffing. It doesn't take a whole lot, but just a little stuffing to lift the hat up on the head. Now, I think that the the way that the hat falls around the nose is the most important part of a gnome and again this is why i like being able to use those foam balls rather than a ping pong ball if you can get a hold of them because you can glue directly to the nose instead of just gluing to the sides of the nose or you know down kind of on the shirt i guess but i if i can i try to get the nose done first and then we can form everything else around it because that is the whole thing that makes a gnome different than any other type of doll decoration, whatever you want to call it, is the nose. So if you get the nose right, you will be able to really be happy with your gnome. Okay, so we're getting it there. I'm going to glue that top part down so it looks more like a baker's hat. Okay. And add a little more stuffing. This can get a little bit tricky making your own hat. That's for sure. This isn't the easiest one, but it definitely is worth it. And again, we're going to do that same thing where we go half, half. So we're going to go glue on the very front and on the very back. And once that's dried, then we'll go to the exact halfway between, glue that on both sides, and then halfway between those, halfway between those, you can see the back, I tried to move it too fast. You got to give it time to dry. But for the sake of the video, I was trying to hurry along here. But again, you just keep going half and half and half until you get it evenly spaced all the way around. And it definitely is easier to use a sock or gloves, but I wanted to be able to show that you don't always have to. You can just use a circular piece of fabric and you can create a very cute hat and especially it gives you more options with colors and styles okay she's starting to come together I am a little bit obsessed with gnomes I would say I have some new ones coming up that I've been working on I'm gonna be doing I, I have some for every holiday <clears throat> started with Christmas, worked my way through all the way to now with just finished Easter and now this lemon one. The next one's going to be, I've got a bumblebee one coming up, a ladybug, a one with a raincoat and galoshes. I just love it. There's just so many different things you can do. But I'm really excited about teaching you how to make accessories that can go on or around or with your gnomes. Okay, now, I love the pinwheels. They're, they make perfect little skirts. So I just pull the wire right out, fold down the very top edge, and it's just the perfect little apron. Okay, so 
make sure you check back. Every Wednesday, I'm posting new videos. And once in a while, I post in between that too. But for sure, every Wednesday, I'm posting something new on my DIY is my happy place YouTube channel. And I have to say that I love using things that I can get from the Dollar Tree and creating something fun and inviting. I think that this gnome would be perfect if she was holding a big lemon in her hands. So using my curler arms, I can adjust those to fit whatever she might be holding. So putting our little lemon on here. Now this lemon um, was made. I didn't, I didn't make this, but um, you can pick up lemons from the Dollar Tree, but sometimes I can hot glue them, but the lemons tend to need a little extra strong glue. They don't love hot glue. Now, adding little embellishments really help to make a gnome look, take it over the top. And I love these little sticker pearls to go around the top of the hat, or right around the edge of the hat. Now, I don't know if you noticed, I put some pipe cleaners around her arms to help hold her arms in place around that lemon until that super glue dries, because the hot glue's there, but it also needed some super glue. And then I'm adding the pearls just around the bottom edge to give it a little extra pizzazz. And we are getting very close to done. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and share this out where you can. I appreciate all the comments and all my wonderful subscribers. I can't believe how exciting it is to have so many of you here today. Now I'm going to throw in a little teaser about next Wednesday, which I'm going to be showing you how I create this food and other such embellishments using Dollar Tree items. It's a special little tip or trick that I made up myself and it works fabulously and it's so easy and so much fun. So come back next Wednesday. I upload videos periodically here and there, but I always upload a video on a Wednesday. So I'll see you again soon.